Welcome to another Glass of Bubbly video and this time we want to look at champagne labels and champagne labels that me and you have visited not that long ago. This one is Champagne Ultra de Champignon. This is winemaker Laurent, a young chap making very good champagne labels. And we've got two examples here. So we have got the, the trophy winner at the 2020 Glass of Bubbly Awards for the category of fireworks. This is, is 2012 Grand Cru Vintage. We've also got the gold medal winning wine, the Extra Brut Premier Cru, um, which got the Hint of Spice Gold Medal. Yes. Hint of Spice Gold Medal. Okay. So, just to give people a little bit of information, the Extra Brut is 40% Pinot Noir, 40% Meunier, and 20% of the Chardonnay. And the, 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 um, the vintage 2012 is driven by a Pinot Noir, and I think it's about 20% Chardonnay in that wine there. So the Champagne Ultra, we've been to just outside of Epinay. They have around about 35 hectares, so they're a decent sized winery. They're a grower Champagne in my, in my view, uh, but they're going places. They're producing an awful lot of Champagne. They're expanding very quickly. They've got a young, innovative, kind of forward-thinking guy at, at, at the front of the business. Um, and they do Premier Cru, they do Grand Cru, so Premier and Grand Cru, and they've got different spots where their vineyards are. And I think that includes, I think I've written it down, but it's Haute Ville, Champignon, Dizzy, Haute Ville for the Premier Cru, and then they've got Chewy and Aie for the Grand Cru. So they have a nice selection of parcels of lands that they've got, and they usually win medals and trophies. I think Laurent came to one of the dinners before we had the lockdown to pick up a trophy, and obviously this year another trophy, and a and, and selection of medals. So each year our judges seem to select their champagnes and pick them. They obviously like them, so which is a good thing. Um, and anything else you want to add to this, or are you going to, well, we're going to stick to my notes on this? I'm going to stick to my notes. <laughs> stick to my taste. <laughs> You're waiting to taste, good. So as I say, the, the winemaker is Laurent, and it is a family business dating back to the 1950s, grandfather down to the father, and then down to the son. Uh, 1953, Gerard Ultra started things off. And here, am I going to keep you waiting for any longer, or do you want to get going? We can get going. We can get going, okay, that sounds good to me. So let's start with the Extra Brut, the Premier Cru, Extra Brut, their sugar. So... There we go, that's a nice sound. So, and this is the gold in the hint of spice. Hint of spice, yes. Now the spices obviously can mean a whole host of things that can be kind of fruits such as chilies, it can be roots, uh, it can be uh, you know, the seeds, flower seeds, all these kind of things. But pepper, definitely, you know, pepper. Yeah. And usually in the champagne region is an expression of pepper, white pepper especially. Just up towards your heart, on ass, ream, that region, for me. Do this. Oh, God. oh lovely, I've got a lovely... I've walked into a patisserie shop, that's what I've got, and they're baking, halfway through baking, so it's not quite all the way baked, but you kind of open the oven door and they're halfway cooked. That's what I've got on the nose here. It's, it's mm. soft and elegant mm. on the aroma. Soft and elegant, classic and elegant? Uh, possibly, yeah. Okay. Classic and elegant, yeah. Mm. Here I've got clean, crystal clear flavours. Mm. Possibly I've got that hint of white pepper coming through, but it's a wonderful wine, it's a wonderful wine, and this would accompany certain foods very well. Yeah. I would say meat, so I'm picturing a nice uh, meat dish, but very well done, very fine meat, um, not too big a plate of food, just something, uh, one of the courses of maybe five or six that you're having with this champagne to run alongside it, maybe game meats, something like that. Would it go with fish? It could do, depending on what fish you're doing. If it's something like steamed white fish, potentially, something like that, with a few little green veg alongside, that could go well. 
but the nose is very, is splendid. There is that white pepper, very subtle white pepper character, which I can understand why they may have put it into the uh, into spice category. I'm also getting like a hint of nuttiness on the nose or on the flavour on the flavour. Mm. Yeah, green kind of nuttiness, so a young walnut maybe. So we had it when we were living in France once, we had this lovely big walnut tree. And if you picked them when they were pretty properly ripe, they would be green. You could still eat them, but they were much, they were very taut, very, make your mouth feel very tight and dry, but green style. So th that kind of character, young kind of walnut expression. Hmm. But quality, clean champagne. For me. Sugar wise, it's an extra brute, it's not overly dry. To me, I would not know that this was extra brute, I'd say this is a brute. So the fruits are doing their job here by delivering some the sweetness, um, no added, you know, very minimal sugar in this. The fruits are doing very good work. Yeah, the grapes, I see what you're saying. So this is like the Pinot the Noir and the Meunier coming through. The Meunier, yeah. And then you've got the floral element. A touch of yellow floral in there for the Chardonnay. We can be, I could be tasting this all day, this one. Well, only until the bottle runs out. Yes, yes. Yes, that's very, very true, yeah. We'll have to get the Magnum next time. So the next one we're going to do is the Vintage 2012. Now, as I say, this is the Pinot Noir. I'm not stating on the back here. Yeah, Pinot Noir is Chardonnay. Cuvée 1670. de de Champignon. So, 11 generations. Okay. So, a lot of history to this wine. So, a, a great privilege to have opened and, and be in tasting this one. So, we're going to be tasting the vintage 2012. And this was the trophy winner for the Fireworks Category 2020 Glass of Lovely Award. So, took home a, a trophy and took home a gold. Is not bad performance. Yeah, it is good. Different style. I've got a yellow, I've got a citrus, a creamy pastry citrus on this. What was that lemon cake that you mentioned once? Lemon drizzle cake. Lemon drizzle cake. I'm also getting like white, um, yellow floral. Yellow floral, I'm getting, what am I getting? I'm getting a, a touch of salty toastiness. This was fireworks, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I'm getting a mush, I'm getting a mushroom effect as well. I'm getting a kind of dusty, when you've gone down into lots of champagne cellars, you, you recognise certain smells, which is kind of... You see all of the black kind of moss, the dust, you see all of this and you, you smell a, a, an old cellar. This is smelling like that, but in a very positive way, not a negative way. There's nothing wrong with the champagne at all. There's certainly a toast in this coming through. The exceptional winemaking, what they can achieve from those, from those grapes to deliver this after nine years is incredible. It's enjoyable to appreciate the aroma mm. of this champagne. Mm. Yeah, and I think as you, as you taste more and more champagnes and, and wines, and then your vocabulary improves, your experiences, your memories improve, so you get to spend longer and longer on the aroma and then on the flavours. Because a lot of wines bring back memories. They may be very clear, like, oh, it's strawberries, or it's lemon, or it's pastry. Sometimes there's flavours that trigger something in your mind and they take you back a number of years and you say, oh, I remember when I was younger, I tasted that. That's what that reminds me of. You know, it's a very personal thing. Wine is very personal. There's no right or wrong way. What I say, you may like this one, I may like that one. Doesn't mean that we're wrong. And also it can just be like a certain sort of cake or even candy floss and that just brings you back to the last time you actually had it. Yeah, yeah, true. But they do, they do look for consistency. Many winemakers look for consistency when they're making their wines because they have a, a selection of people that become fans of their champagne. So they expect the style not to change too much over the years. So 
the winemaker has to deal with different um, uh, different seasons. So it's, you, you know you have a, you may have a bad winter that affects the grapes, but they're still expected to adhere to the quality each year that they produce, rather than a different style every year because then they, they, their, their fan base may waver a little bit. But we've had vintages from the same champagne maker. We've sat there and we've tasted like two, 2004, 2005 and six, and they've been massive variation, massive variation. Really, really good on the nose. Um, it's just taking me back to a, a champagne cellar and doing a wonderful champagne tasting in a champagne cellar. Mm. The nose of both of these are top quality. Yeah. But it does help with the Lehman glasses, it does help. So we've got some wonderful Lehman glasses here. Very big, very bold glasses. Uh, so thanks very much to Lehman for supplying those. Mm. Really good, really good champagnes. Uh, lovely presentation box that they put them in. Uh, they do a host of different champagnes on their website, which you can find. Uh, uh, quite a few labels that they do. Two of them entered the Glass Bobby Awards this year. And as I say, Trophy and the Gold Medal is a really good combination to have had. Looking for any other bits of information here, I think we've covered everything on this one. Um, we was there back in August last year. It was yeah. a really good, a really good visit that we had. And um, thanks to Lohan that we have these two wines at the awards. And I think that's yeah. about it for me. Yeah, that's, that's it. Thanks very much. Yeah. So thanks very much to Champagne Autro. And until next time, um, cheers. Cheers. <laughs>